Use of Force Continuum by Cat Jungle. A use of force continuum is a standard that provides law enforcement officers and civilians with guidelines as to how much force may be used against a resisting subject in a given situation. The purpose of these models is to clarify both for law enforcement officers and civilians the complex subject of use of force. Number one, officer's presence. The professionalism, uniform, and utility belt of the law enforcement officer and the marked vessel or vehicle the officer arrives in. The visual presence of authority is normally enough for a subject to comply with an officer's lawful commands. Depending on the totality of the circumstances, a call slash situation may require additional officers or on-scene officers may request assistance in order to gain better control of the situation and ensure a more safe environment for all involved. It also will depend on the circumstances of the situation. For example, depending on how many people are at the scene with the officer, a larger presence may be required. However, if 10 officers arrive at a scene with only one single suspect, the public may perceive the situation as an excessive use of of officers present with the use of force continuum. Number two, verbal commands slash cooperative controls. Clear and understandable verbal directions by an officer aimed at the subject. In some cases, it is necessary for the officer to include a consequence to the verbal direction so that the subject understands what will happen if the subject refuses to comply with the officer's direction. The verbal command and consequence must be legal and not considered excessive according to the continuum. For example, an officer could not order a disabled person in a wheelchair to stand up or be sprayed by pepper spray. Number three, a empty hand submission technique, PPCT, pressure point control tactic, control tactic techniques, a level of force that has a low probability of causing soft connective tissue damage or bone fractures. This would include joint manipulation techniques, applying pressure to pressure points, and normal application of handcuffs. Number four, empty hand submission techniques, PPCT, pressure point control tactics, control tactic techniques. A level of force that has a low probability of causing soft connective tissue damage or bone fracture. This would include joint manipulation techniques, applying pressure to pressure points, and normal application of handcuffs. Number five, intermediate weapons. An amount of force that would have a high probability of causing soft connective tissue damage or bone fracture. For example, expandable baton, baton, pepper spray, taser, beanbag rounds, rubber fin stabilized ammunition, mace spray, police dog, etc. Intermediate weapon techniques are designed to impact muscles, arms, and legs, and intentionally using an intermediate weapon on the head, neck, groin, kneecaps, or spine would be classified as deadly or lethal force. Number six, lethal force slash deadly force. A force with a high probability of causing death or serious bodily injury. Serious bodily injury includes unconsciousness, protracted or obvious physical disfigurement, a protracted loss 
of or impairment to the functions of a bodily member, organ, or the mental faculty. A firearm is the most widely recognized lethal or deadly force weapon. However, an automobile or weapon of opportunity could also be defined as a deadly force utility. Subject classification. How they classify these subjects, these suspects. In our use of force continuum models, the actions of the subject is classified in order for the officer to quickly determine what level of force is authorized and may be necessary to apprehend or compel compliance from the individual. Listed below are examples. Passive compliant, a person who recognizes the authority of the officer's presence and follows the verbal commands of the officer. Passive resistor, a person who refuses to follow the verbal commands of the officer but does not resist attempts by officers to take positive physical control over them. Active resistor, a person who does not follow verbal commands, resists attempts by officer to take positive physical control over them, but does not try to inflict harm on the officer. Active aggressor, a person who does not follow verbal commands, resists attempts by officers to take positive physical control over them and attempts to cause harm to the officer or others. Generally, the passive subjects and active resistors fall under one through three, the use of force continuum, which ranges from a show of authority to handcuffs. While active aggressors fall under levels four through six, which ranges from kicks and punches to lethal force, the officers are trained to apply the proper measure of force within the continuum based on the actions and classification of the subject. So as everybody see, if you're black, you can be passive compliant, which is the most passive of confrontations with the police officer when dealing with the suspect. And you're automatically treated as if you're an aggressor, an aggressive, resistant person. They automatically crank it up when they first get there. They showing a, a it's an excess, excessive abuse of presence of authority. It's five or six officers against one person. They start talking to you crazy, making demands, trying to tell you you're not you're resisting when you're not, so they can crank up the continuum to the next level, and that's how black, black people get killed. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, it's it's very important that you understand the continuum. Because after you understand the continuum, you automatically know when the abuse has begun. You, 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 it's, it's a dispute between you and your girl, or maybe not that situation, because that's domestic. But say you and a lady at the grocery store get into it, instead of one officer pulling up, ten police officers pull up. You already see right now they're abusing the continuum. They're already abusing their presence of an authority. They're already putting you in an, uh, uh, in an intimidating situation where you feel intimidated. But see, so you're already being treated as if you're resisting. That's what I'm telling you. So, you know, you got We got to practice being passive compliant when dealing with them. Not saying let them slap your mama down and none of that. But when dealing with them, when you have an encounter with them, keep it on the passive compliant level. Because if you don't, they're going to crank it up to the next level, two, then three, all the way to five and six, where they can start beating you upside the head with the baton or pull out their gun and kill you. This cat jungle, y'all. Stay informed.